Hello and welcome to the Chickadee Knitting Podcast. Today is Monday, September 21st, and this week I have two big exams um, that I've been studying for, or avoiding studying for. This weekend was very productive, but not in a homework or studying kind of sense. I cleaned my entire apartment, um, deep cleaned my room, like took all my books off my bookshelf, sanitized and dusted and wiped everything down and um, yeah, I uh, so I got a lot done and it's my room is very clean, my apartment is very clean, I did a lot of cooking, I found a phenomenal recipe to make tomato sauce from scratch and so I decided you know when would be a good time to make that? Now, when I have two exams to study for. Um, so that's what I'll be doing the, throughout the week, uh, but I needed that week and I needed that time to focus my energy on something um, constructive and creative um, and that now that I have a nice clean fresh room I'm able to focus even more. Um, oh and also I have a new little backdrop. These are my winter sheets because where I'm from the seasons go straight from su summer to winter there I think we had like maybe two three days that we would consider fall the leaves haven't even like changed um but it's absolutely freezing uh so you know that means we could be all warm and cozy with our warm and cozy knit goodies speaking of which I have one finished object that I finished um, between the previous episode and now. Um, this actually isn't the real one. Um, the scarf that I was knitting, um, I'd already knit myself one that was similar, and so I'm showing you that, the one that I made, um, out of recycled yarn from a thrift store sweater. And the reason why I don't have the one that I made and showed um, in the previous episode was because I've already given it away. Um, I made a little care package uh, out of like, <laughs> I had like a um, gift basket container and so I filled that with um, some left some surgical masks that were brand new and clean that I had uh, sort of pilfered from my university um, along with some uh, non-perishable snacks like granola bars um, and water bottles, um, and, uh, put the scarf in there as well. Usually I, like, tie it around the, a tree or something, um, but, uh, when I walk to school, there, um, usually tends to be folks standing at street corners, um, and so I left it at a street corner, um, for whoever comes by to pick it up, um, and so hopefully it will keep someone nice and toasty when it's like absolutely freezing outside nowadays. Um, so I'm glad that I finished that and got that done. Um, but with the personal one that I have, I, I'm not quite sure if I like the little threads that hang out. Everyone that I talk to says, oh, that is such a cool neat effect. Did the yarn do that? Have, you know, did, was that intentional? Um, and it was not, it was just the way that I had to, as I explained in the last episode, um, to kind of anchor the different segments of yarn. Um, but everyone I've talked to thinks it looks really cool and really unique, um, but it just kind of looks messy to me. So I might wear it around um, and see if they like tickle or itch or bother me. Um, and if they do, then I'll be like, yeah, I'm justified. I'm just gonna snip them right off. Um, but uh, if I think that it looks cool and unique, then I'll just keep them, I guess. The other um, finished objects that I've got, so I finished these a long, long time ago, but I wanted to share them because I love them so much. Um, I have, I got a bunch of the super, super soft yarn that I'll be listing in the description box because I can't remember them or what it's called off the top of my head. Um, but I knit some socks for a friend and I love doing them so much that I knit a pair for myself. And I love that so much that I knit another pair for somebody, I don't know where they went, but they're somewhere. So they, I made three pairs of the exact same socks. Um, 
just because I loved the pattern and the yarn and it's so cozy. Um, and then there's, you can see the heel there and the cuff. Um, and so, I don't know, I wear these all the time. These are like my favorite. Um, I do get a little sad though with uh, homemade knit, scar knit sc socks, I keep wanting to say scarf. Um, because after you, when you first make them and they're all like perfect and blocked and um, the yarn is just pristine and beautiful and sleek and smooth, but the moment you wash them, um, it gets all fuzzy and pilly, if you can see that. And so, um, you know, it just, it adds to the charm, but it's, it's just not the same. Um, anyway, I have, <laughs> I have a lot of feelings about that, but I had so much fun making these socks, clearly, since I made <laughs> two other pairs. Um, and there really wasn't a pattern for it, I just kind of, I have on my notes app um my own little pattern of directions to make socks the kind of socks that you know fit best to my feet that I had you know experimented um with different like heel flap styles and different ways to shape the toes um and so I just I did that so there's no particular pattern it was just the um basic framework that I had set out and then I just added the stripes these, this is so fun. So there's three different colors of yarn. Um, I had originally gotten the uh, stripe yarn, which is, it's like a very soft, very, very light blue with um, different like blush, peach, and orange tones in there. I'll hold this up so maybe you can see a little better. Um, I'd gotten that at the state fair. Um, it was so beautiful that even though I had no idea of what to do with it, I had to, I had to buy it. And so I wanted to knit a pair of socks for a friend of mine, um, cause she always is wearing the greatest, um, wacky socks. And I was looking for just one other color to pair with it, um, to kind of be like an accent color for the sock. Um, and I was torn between this orange and this blue, and I, um, and the lady at the yarn shop was like, why not, why not just get both and try them out? And I love both of them so much that I incorporated both into the sock. And I'm very happy that I did that. Um, I'm very grateful for her. And so I did have um, some scraps of that yarn left. And so I made a, a mini shawl um, out of it. Uh, it's a nice, you know, kind of loopy curved triangle. Um, and I can't remember the pattern name. I didn't really follow the whole pattern. I just followed the, um, increase for it and then, um, just kept knitting until I decided to bind it off. So it's kind of, you know, so it has a flat top, um, rather than, uh, kind of being a triangle like that it was supposed to be, it's more that if that makes any sense um but yeah again it is out of that same yarn it is so warm and because I only had like this much yarn left it wasn't enough to make um another pair of socks so I just made an itty bitty little shawl that you know it's nice and cozy to wrap around my neck when I'm walking to class so but those are my finished objects in the world of works in progress, I'm still um, working on that, um, it's called the Botanical Lace Shawl, or either that or the Botanical Lace Wrap by Pearl Soho. Um, I've made quite a bit of progress on it since last we saw this um, piece. Um, the pattern calls to repeat the lace pattern four times, but that was too much for me. I decided to only cast on enough for three um, repetitions of the pattern, because otherwise I would just get way too bored and lose my patience with it. But three was just enough to keep um, keep me going. Uh, and so um, when I had cast on, it was really wide, so it would have been perfect for a wrap. 
um, but just the way that the pattern and this yarn works is that it kind of has shrunken on itself. So now it's more scarf width. So this will now be my um, botanical lace scarf. And so it's, you know, been really fun to continue working on this pattern. Um, but I had to put it on hold. These are not the needles that I used for it. Um, these are size 2.5 millimeters. I'm not quite sure what those are in US terms. Um, but I usually, let's see if I have it here, use um, a size, but I usually use a size 3.25 millimeters um, for this scarf. Um, and I use 3.25 a lot. It's the needle that I use the most. And so, um, I held these aside because I'm using those needles to make an iPad cozy for a friend who just bought an iPad. So, iPad cozy. This is made from um, <laughs> really admittedly cheap yarn from Walmart. It's one there, you know, 100% cotton, sort of rough yarns. Um, but I chose it specifically because it's durable, um, so maybe it will offer like a little bit of protection. So yeah, and it's really stiff, so it will hold its shape well as well. But I only have a teeny tiny bit left. Um, I'm only about halfway done with it because um, it's one of the larger iPads. I looked up the measurements for it. Um, so I'm going to be needing to get more of this. But the construction is really interesting. I'm not following a pattern. I've made myself um, kind of an iPad cozy before and I was just sort of knitting in the round um, but that didn't have the structure that I wanted. It kind of was looked loose and floppy and you know my iPad fits in there just fine but I wanted this to be nice and neat and have crisp stiff edges and so the way that I made it um, I'm actually knitting it inside out. Uh, so this that. isn't going to be what the final thing looks like. Um, so the construction is really interesting. I'm knitting it inside out and I'm not following a pattern, but I'm using a technique that I've used in the past that has worked really well for creating um, a nice rectangular pocket, which is exactly what I wanted for this with really neat edges um, that will hold its shape without having too much of like a ladder effect. Um, on each side where um, if you like knit with double pointed needles or in the round or with a magic loop you can you know kind of might get that um, gaps in between but I want it to be nice and tight and structured so what I'm doing is down the row I am alternating a knit stitch and a slip and then on the way back I will then reverse the pattern so that I knit what was previously slipped and slip what was previously knit so essentially knitting two sides of the pocket, but one at a time while keeping both sides on the same needle. So in the end, once I've knit as much as I need to, I'm going to then um, grab a third needle to help me out and um, separate the two sides of the pocket onto two different needles. And then from there add um, like a ribbing or something to um, you know, finish the iPad cozy off with some flare and then bind that off and weave in the ends. When I was casting on, I intentionally left a massive, massive tail, um, that I've wrapped up to keep out of the way so it doesn't, um, get tangled or get confused for the main yarn. I've definitely done that before. And so what I'm going to do is, um, take this and then weave it in along the edge, um, to give it along the entire length of it to give it more um, structure and protection on the bottom. Um, I assume that my friend is going to get um, a case for their iPad as well, um, but I just wanted, you know, something cute to carry it around in. So um, hopefully everything will fit all right. Um, and then also hopefully it will look decent and cute. So that is that. And if you're wondering what on earth I was doing at the very beginning of the video, I am making some flarn. It is um, plastic yarn um, 
made from plastic bags. Um, specifically bread bags because um, in my apartment we go through a lot of bread and the plastic is actually really sturdy and durable so perfect for making decent plarn. I've made plarn in the past that just kept snapping because the plastic wasn't um, uh, as sturdy as it needed to be to withstand um, the tension of knitting and of being a knit fabric. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet. Um, I might just make like a bag because I think it's so funny to make a bag, a plastic bag out of plastic bags, except this one will be reusable, um, whereas the original bag was disposable. Um, there are tons of videos on how to make plarn um, on YouTube. Um, I've done my research and found a method that works well for me, so I encourage you if you're interested in um, being a little more sustainable and not constantly throwing away plastic bags um, to give it a try. It's Plarn has some really neat properties that most yarn doesn't. Um, again, for one, it is plastic. Um, it can be easier to wash because you just kind of, you can just spray the side of it and then just let it dry. Um, you don't have to be super, you know, delicate um, or sensitive with it because it's just plastic. It's not yarn. Um, and it also does not tangle. I don't know why that is, but just plarn doesn't tangle. So you never have to worry about it getting bunched up um, unless you really made a mess with it or really tried hard to tangle it. I'm sure you could. Um, but just on its own, whenever I wind up plarn, um, or unwind it or do anything with it. I've never had a tangle before. The only thing I really have difficulty with plarn though is I still haven't figured out how to match um, the plarn thickness to a proper um, appropriate set of needles for it. I either um, choose needles that are too big and so um, with normal yarn if you have needles that are larger or thicker than um, the uh, appropriate match to the um, thickness of the yarn. You're just going to have, you know, some gaps, some lace. Um, it's going to be really loose and airy, but with plarn, that kind of stretches the um, plarn taut, and it's more prone to snapping. Um, but uh, I, if you have needles that are too narrow um, for the thickness of the plarn, it gets really tight and compact um, and it's really really difficult to work with um, so hopefully with this uh, batch that I've made right now I don't often make plarn I keep saying that I'm going to and I ha in the past have collected just an entire closet full of bags from friends who are like oh you're gonna be recycling these plastic bags take all of mine because everyone I know has a ton of plastic bags that they, they keep getting more faster than they can use them up and so um I was generous and took them off their hands and never made a single thing apart with it I ended up throwing away just way too much plastic. Um, so that was a little unsustainable on my part and it sort of defeated the purpose of making the plarn. Or um, I'll make it and I'll get in the groove and then I'll just have nothing to make with it. Um, and I never stick to a consistent project because of all my difficulty trying to find the right needles. The plarn starts snapping, I have to throw it away. Um, so wish me luck on this current batch and I wish you luck in all your future knitting endeavors. Um, I hope that you are staying warm if you're living in somewhere chilly um, and that you're finding meaningful, um, inspirational, uh, creative ways to spend your time. And with that, I'll see you later. Bye!